from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for Sleep With Me. The podcast, it's really here for you. I'm here, I'm, I'm not playing, I'm playful, but I ain't playing games, uh, Except if it's if it's a, the game is a distri- you know I guess I'm playing a game with your brain bots. You know what we, we tonight we'll talk about brain bots. So that's what I'm here to distract and to keep you company. It's the time of the podcaster that goes on and on and on for something you could have said in two seconds, which is it's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep. Uh, hey, everybody, before we get on here, Sleep With Me is built on empathy and compassion. That means being here for you. There's links to extra resources if you need them right now in the show notes. And it means supporting the members of our community, being a part of positive change. You could do that. There's links to organizations you can connect with uh, to say Black Lives Matter, to say Stop Asian Hate right in our show notes. One of those organizations that I've been supporting is Beam. You could support them using the links in our show notes. Uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, oh, here's Here's the sponsors that enable me to be here for for you for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots here. I got a quick, a couple quick questions for you. I always ask these, like, how many episodes of Sleep With Me do you listen to a month or a night? Is it four? Is it eight? Is it 12? So that's question one. Question two, how much do you pay, pay that mega cable corp or super streaming service, uh, you know, every single month? And then would you would you give Scoots a raise? Like, would you give Scooter a raise compared to what you pay that streaming service or, or your cable company from zero to five dollars a month? Month, or from zero to ten dollars a month, or zero to twenty dollars a month, and you might say, "Scoots, that's this is a free podcast. That's the like, wackiest thing I've ever heard." And I say, "Yeah, that, those are the people I'm looking for. If you're in a stable financial position, you get value out of the podcast, especially considering the stuff you pay for every month. And then, yeah, are you that one out of every hundred people that's just wild enough to say?" Wait a second, I get what you're saying. I'm going to give you a raise from zero to a month to $10 a month because you're worth it. Because I get a lot out of the podcast. I listen every single night. And some of you might say, well, one of, like, uh, you might be like, you're a tougher boss. I get it. I respect that. Uh, and you might say, well, come into my office, Scooter. Yeah, you put me to sleep every single night or four nights a week. Uh, but what else is in it? And I say, okay, five bucks a month, you get ad free episodes. Ten and twenty dollars a month, you get bonus episodes, all intro episodes episodes, all night episodes. There is so much uh, in, I don't know. Are you the kind of boss that's wild enough to pay for a free podcast? Are you the kind of supervisor that's so wacky you'd go from paying me zero to five or ten dollars a month? Well, if you if you answered yes, uh, and that's okay if you don't. Uh, uh, really, it's only a small percentage of people that really are that wild. So if you are that wild and you're in a position to do so, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. You could support the show. You could give value back for the value you get out of the show, and you get amazing bonus stuff. You're a part of an amazing community and you're a rebel you're so rebellious to pay for a free podcast that's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron sleepwithmepodcast.com slash p-a-t-r-o-n thanks everybody all right everybody it's time to talk about helix it's the bed i sleep on every single night I've heard from so many listeners about the experience of buying a mattress the traditional way how uncomfortable it is, how time-consuming it is, how people are just trying to sell you a mattress that might not even fit your needs. You might say to yourself, didn't anybody fix this? And I say, yeah, Helix fixed it. And here's the thing. Have you taken that Helix quiz yet? Uh, helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. It matches your body type and your sleep preferences to find the perfect mattress for you. So it's not a one-size-fits-all situation because you don't want a mattress made for somebody else. With Helix, you're getting a mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. And everybody's unique. Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses, mattresses that are great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And there's even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size folks. I took the Helix quiz and I got matched with the Helix Dusk because I sleep hot. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. And it's a bed that fits my needs that I look forward to getting into every single night because I know I'm going to be comfortable. I love the unboxing videos other people are sending out and seeing which model of Helix they got matched with. 
So if you're looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. And Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. And I just saw them on another best of list on CNET last week. But all you need to do is go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. They'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Their beds have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up if you don't love it, but you will. And it gets better than that because Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helix, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash sleep for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average. And customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The one part of the podcast I need you here. It's where I pop my peas. I got mouth noises indeed. It's where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors because the sponsors are here due to listener support. All podcasts to support is direct support, meaning whether it's the sponsors of the Patreon, we really do depend on listener action. And it's the listeners who not only support the sponsors, but amplify their support by letting the sponsors know about it on social media media or giving them a call, sending them an email. And right now I'm still recruiting. I'm looking for anybody that's got those Bombas socks, whether it's the Sesame Street socks or the performance socks I go running in. If you supported Bombas, please let me know about it. Let them know about it so I can thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Fill out the form at uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. I'll send you out some stickers. And that is the end of the, oh no, that's not the end of this. That's just the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the support you need if you need extra support right now there's links to resources in the show notes and it's about supporting the members of our community with our actions being a part of positive change saying black lives matter with our actions saying stop aapi hate with our actions and there's so much more we could be doing that you're probably already doing to support the members of the community you're in and i want to hear about it please let me know about it uh, send me a message through our website Let me know what causes you're supporting, what you're interested in, what you're doing to be a part of positive change. Uh, And uh, yeah, that's part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone I'm interested in. And uh, that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Mystery Bard, I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. 
what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place wherever where you can set aside. Sometimes I have to use my words more than once. Where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether that's thoughts on your mind or that you're thinking about from the past, the present, or the future. And, you know, the thoughts that are coming at you, like, like uh, or popping up or rolling around. I do have a lot of thoughts that, that you know, my dog, this is an unexplained behavior. I mean, it could be explained away. Say, well, her back itches, maybe. But one dog behavior is like when a dog rolls around on its back. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think she just does it because she's in a good mood. She says, I'm in such good mood. I'm going to flip right over and roll around, wriggle around on my back. Not rolling. I'm wriggling, Scoots. I'm so happy that uh, if you're happy and you know it, wriggle around on your back. Uh, also, it feels good. It's not just, it's not because I'm scratching an itch that isn't there because I'm scratching it. Uh, I'm scratching an itch on the inside. That's why I'm rolling around on my back. Also, aren't you introducing a podcast and not interpreting dog, but like uh, interpretive, interpret, interpret, interpreting interpretive dog dance. Uh, that's my next podcast. Also known as projecting meaning onto, uh, you know, imagine. So whatever thought, I mean, I'll probably have some thoughts about that later. Thoughts, it could be feelings. It could be emotions coming up for you uh, or physical sensations. It could be changes in your schedule, your routine. Maybe someone's in town. Maybe someone's out of town. Maybe the, I mean, humid, changes in humidity. Holy moly. Sometimes there's even, you know, imagine, I say, well, it must be humidity that's uh, got me going now or not going. So whatever's keeping me awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, eventually soothing, I'll say, creaky dulcet tones. Uh, pointless meanders, uh, superfluous tangents. Oh, I was going to say, well, creaky dulcet tones mean my voice is not perfect, not traditionally soothing. Like I'd say, you could classify every moment of the podcast under that. You'd say, well, how, okay, not traditionally soothing. Some would say not soothing at all. And I'd say, maybe you're right in some sense. Uh, comforting, maybe not soothing. But I'll use creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I don't want to say ill-informed logic, illogical logic, though, lack of logic. All to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company while you fall asleep. That's really my goal, is to take your mind off of stuff so you can drift off. A few other things to know, though, if you're new. If you're a regular listener or you're new, I'm so glad you're here. Really, it's great to see you. Uh, I'm so happy to be here on a regular basis. This is the first, is this, yeah, this is the first intro I'm recording of the year. So that's why I'm saying that. I'm so glad I'm here with you in the future, but in the present, really, we're here together. So thank you. Thank you if this is your first time or your thousandth plus time. I appreciate it. But if you're new, I did want to tell you a couple of things to know. One is that most people, when they're new to the show, share some feelings. Sometimes it's skepticism. Sometimes it's doubt. Sometimes it's an uncomfortable, awkward feeling. So if you're feeling any of those things, those are that's normal. Because skepticism, because what do you mean this podcast is supposed to put me to sleep? That's one kind of skepticism. Or what do you, what's this, this dude's going to tell, when is he going to tell us, why is he going on and rambling and rambling? Why is his, his voice is creaky and dulcet. So those are normal reactions and like, I totally accept them. And, and I mean, I even accept the fact that, yeah, this podcast may not be your taste. Uh, you may not like me or the style of the show. And that's okay too. I'm still glad you're here for as long as you're going to be here. That's why I try to explain this. But so for most people, this podcast is something that takes a time to get used to, but it, do, it doesn't even work for everybody. So just kind of see how it goes. And this is not my thing. Most listeners say, hey, give it two or three tries. 
So that's uh, that's uh, to uh, kind of soften stuff. Uh, but also, a couple other things to know. This is a podcast you don't really listen to. So that's kind of part of the method that we're already in the middle of. Is that This is a podcast you just barely pay attention to. It, it distracts some of the other parts of you. But it's not something where I tell you a bedtime story and I lead you on a journey and then you drift off or, or I kind of set the, like set them. I don't know. I mean, I kind of do that stuff, but it's more like you're watching somebody else on a journey that you're barely like a sailboat. Like when you're sitting, no, like you could watch a sailboat go from point, point A to point B. Like if you had a view of the bay and you say, oh boy. There's a lot of sailboats out there. I'm just going to watch this one for a little while. At some point, you, you, you would either start to create a story or maybe you're detail-oriented and you say, okay, I noticed that mast. Or you maybe know stuff about sailboats. I know nothing or almost nothing. But it would be tough to pay attention to it for a couple of hours because at some point you'd say, huh, this is getting a little bit... Uh, I'm just barely paying attention to that one sailboat now. Now I'm looking at the bay. It's sparkling. I'm looking at those clouds, noticing those other boats. Uh, oh, wait a second. Do I reckon? Look at the windbreaker. That's a, a ne- I'd love a neon pink or neon green windbreaker. So uh, what's my point? Oh, this is a podcast you barely pay attention to. I think I just ex- gave you an example of why to barely pay attention to me. I could probably spend all day going on tangents about watching boats that don't need to be watched. So it's a podcast you barely listen to. Weird thing is, it's not really a podcast that puts you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company, and you drift off. While while you fall asleep, I'm here to take your mind off stuff. So that's why the shows are over an hour, is to put you, uh, give you some peace of mind and give you plenty of time. There's no pressure to fall asleep. And if you can't sleep or you wake up later, I'm going to be here. Like, I'm here to the very end of the episode trying to be barely engaging for, for the people that can't sleep at all or for the part of you that's asleep. I'm still entertaining what I call your brain bots, which we'll talk about in a minute. So it's a podcast you don't really listen to. It doesn't really put you to sleep either. You say, oh, boy, you're 0 for 2. And it, well, no, and I said, you probably won't like me. So, okay, 0 for 3. Yeah, I'm uh, so let's, oh, structure the show is the next thing that can throw new people off. But regular listeners know it serves a purpose. So the show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's so you can feel welcome. Then there's an intro. Uh, or no, then there's a listener supporter, listener support. Then there's business. Like, uh, so there's a listener support, sponsors, listener support. Uh, then the intro and the intro, it runs from, yeah, maybe like minute six or minute eight to minute 20 to 22. And, uh, it goes on and on and on and it introduces the podcast, but it also eases you into bedtime. So some, like some people, 3% of people skip the intro and they start the show somewhere between 20 and 22 minutes. And then a few thousand people listen to story only episodes on Patreon but the rest of the listeners, they're either getting ready for bed or they're doing some sort of wind down or comforting thing or they're in bed getting cozy. I mean, one th- I bet you there's one person out there making a cozy, maybe a tea cozy, maybe some other cozy as part of their bedtime routine. If, you, if you're doing that, say, you know, let us know about it. Because that would be cool. We'd say, okay, someone's make it, getting cozy, getting cozy, making a cozy, the cozy cast. Uh, I think I've had other podcasts named a cozy cast, but that would be one. The cozy cast. We're making cozies. We're getting cozy. Is there something? There's a tea cozy. That's a thing, right? And that comes up every few years. But so, oh, so the, the, the intro goes on and on and on so that you can, get, get, the day can get a little bit further away with, with each passing moment. Then we'll do a, a be, then there's business. Then we'll do our uh, board game unboxing and look at a couple board games that I got recently. Recently for me, for you, you know, be a little bit in the distant past, but that's cool too because this is you know it's always it's always board game season. So that'll be 
the intro. Oh, oh then the bed, bedtime service. Then thank you. So that's the structure of the show. The other things to know that are important is uh, the reason I make this show. I make the show for two reasons. One, because I've been there. Tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. Uh, I've, I've, had, I've had those. Uh, so I know how it feels. I know the frustration and how it feels in the deep, dark night. And I know it can feel lonely. So if I can keep you company or take your mind off stuff, that's my honor. The other thing is that you deserve a good night's sleep. That's what's important to me, is that you get the sleep you need and you deserve so you can live your life, so your life can be a little bit more manageable, a little bit fuller. And if that happens, the world as a whole is going to be a better place. That's really the closest thing to a miracle I've ever experienced is hearing that. And knowing it's true, they say, okay, if your life's a little bit better, the world I live in is a better place. Uh, and that's something that's easy to forget. It doesn't even have to do with the podcast, really. Uh, it's just a fact. Uh, a fact it's easy for me to forget. And that kind of leads into the other stuff of the brain bots. So that was a term I came up with at some point. And a brain bot is like, a like a, for me, what I picture... You can picture it. They look and there's so many different types of brain bots and they're beautiful in their varied uh, uh, spectrum of existence. But a brain bot to me is some sort of a unifunction bot, bot short for robot or droid in, in this case uh, uh, that I'm imagining most of the time. That only serves a unifunction. Like one, it has one function a lot of times there's a function from the past, like uh, maybe somewhere, probably not a, not a very glamorized brain bot would be like the wrinkled clothes brain bot, R embarrassment from wrinkled clothes brain bot. And that thing's been in sleep mode, at least inside me, until about two seconds ago when it just woke up. It said, uh, you could have used me. You haven't talked to me in 31 years. And I say, yeah, you're right. But the thing is, I don't need you at bedtime. I could have used you two hours before I go anywhere. Where are you? I say, well, that's not really my job. And I say, what do you mean it's not your job? You're the wrinkled, closed brain bot. You're, no, no, no. I'm the embarrassment and shame from wrinkled, closed brain bot. You're looking for some brain bot that was never made. The don't wear wrinkled, let me, proactive. We don't, we don't, we're not proactive. Sorry about that. No, no problem. That's what I was trying to explain to the listeners. I'm not here to judge you. I was just a surprise. I guess I was judging you a little bit because they just said, if I had some sort of bot that said, hey, you're going somewhere in three hours. What are you wearing? And are your clothes ironed? Uh, that would mean... Yeah, that would, that's not real. Yeah, you're right. That's a different person than me. You're right about that. I was true. But so, if, so this clothes, can I just call you uh, Ironbot? Wow. Yeah, Ironbot. I like that. So, Ironbot is like one of these parts of us that uh, doesn't get, probably doesn't get used, to, you know, probably could, could you probably, uh, could be glamorized in some way, especially now that you're Ironbot. Uh, it's got to be tough being Ironbot because Ironbot only gets called into action, you know, when at, at bedtime for some strange reason. And according to some mysterious algorithm, you say, "What? Well, remember when you didn't? Why, why didn't you iron your clothes today?" Or, well, "Man, you would have got a date for that if you had ironed your shirt when you went." And I said, "You're probably right." Uh, so. It's so nice to meet you, Ironbot. I'm almost distracted. I'm more distracted by you and wanting to interact with you. But I was trying to explain to the new listeners what a brain bot is. So, and now that you're here, it's kind of hard for me to explain it. So I have to explain it in a very subtextual and in indirect way. If you catch my drift, listeners. So go the glorious brain bots like Ironbot here. They have important jobs, and they believe their job is very important. Critical mission, wouldn't you say, Ironbot? It is a critical mission, yeah. Get bringing up those feelings for you about ironed clothes. That's the only thing I know how to do. Yeah, that's really the only thing they know how to do, but it's important to them because it's their mission. It's your mission, right? A mission-driven scooter. And, and my mission is to make you, uh, you know, feel feelings about the times your clothes weren't ironed. 
Right, and that's really important to you, huh? Yeah, it's, I guess so, because it's the only job I have. Maybe I could give you another job. Uh, how about, what if I give you a job? I don't, I, I've, I've, I've talked about this on the podcast before, and this is a live experiment, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary. We've never attempted this before. Iron bot, because you're iron. You know, one of the things I tell listeners is like to bring a little bit of silliness to bedtime. And one of the things I tell people, like, there's like kissing your elbow, kissing your shoulders, cupping your elbows, dipping your elbows in milk. You don't do that in bed, though. But I'm thinking for you, what if I give you a new mission instead of embarrassment about ironed clo- unironed clothes? At bedtime, I give you the mission of reminding me to kiss my biceps uh, and with a sense of, sa- like a ses- sense of satisfaction, an overall sense of satisfaction that has nothing to do with biceps or exercise, but just the fact that self-kissing, you know, just a peck. I'm not, I'm not talking about making out with my biceps or leaving, you know, leaving anything behind. Except for, you know, a sweet, you know, touch of dew from my lips, uh, but what do you think about that? You could be in charge of me kissing my bed. To, but like, instead of reminding me about iron clothes, you say, have you kissed your bicep? Have I told you lately, biceps, that I love you with this kiss? Maybe we even sing that song. You, you, you're speechless, Iron Bot. I, li- I, like to, I would love to do that. Okay. Well, may, well hold on. I'll, let me try it. Let's try it right to you. So let's, ki- let's kiss our bicep and tell it we love it. Wow, that's soft. Soft, but like iron, you'd say. Like, it's, oh boy, like if people are imagining my biceps, it's like a, a, a piece of iron. Oh, I was thinking more like a, a cotton ball. Okay, well, let's not quibble. Great job, Iron Bot. So that was, that's new. That's never happened before. Thanks, Iron Bot. I'll see you later at actual bedtime. So that's never happened before where we've worked with a brain bot. But, but you see, you know, brain bots are like those little things that come up at bedtime. I think we, and I'm here to kind of take, you see how I can work with them. And they love listening to my stories. So I guess that was my main point that I was trying to get to that I never did. So I think that's it. I'm glad you're here. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. Uh, and I want to help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple ways I'm able to be here for you twice a week. All right, everybody, Scoots here. It's time to upgrade your apartment. It's time to upgrade your home, but do it the easy way. Go to livefeather.com and use the promo code SLEEP and join the furniture revolution. Just like music, just like movies, why would you want to own something that you want to change on a regular basis? Just like the majority of people don't want to be locked into watching the same movie every night, do you want to live with the same furniture forever? Because I don't know about you, but I've moved enough times and lived lived in enough places to say, you know, you know what? It might just be easier if there was a service that I could just rent furniture from, but not just any furniture, furniture that's stylish, a furniture that's well-made and looks good. And that's why you got to check out Feather. I mean, people move between six and eight times before they hit their early thirties. Feather is a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home, no matter how often they move. They save you money. I mean, furnishing a, a one bedroom can cost upwards of six thousand dollars and with feather you can furnish a bedroom with high quality beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill the delivery team brings the furniture directly to your home in as little as seven days no setting up a separate delivery through a third party so you could go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything just picture that New chest of drawers, a new nightstand, a new bed frame. And they have everything. Rugs, lamps, wall art, and more. And then let's say you move to a different place, different layout, maybe a little different style. No problem. You can easily get furniture that works for that space. Plus, by renting from Feather, you're choosing a sustainable alternative to fast furniture that won't end up in landfills. Feather has changed the way I look at furnishing, because I know I'm going to be moving at least a few more times in the next four years. And I'm tired 
tired of putting furniture together with a little wrench that I'm just going to put on CL for free in a year or two. I want something that looks good, that works well, but is hassle-free. And that's why I love Feather. So try a new way to furnish your home. Right now, Feather has an exclusive offer just for Sleep With Me listeners. If you go to livefeather.com and use the promo code SLEEP, you'll receive $500 off your first month. That's livefeather.com and use our promo code SLEEP for $500 off your first month. Get over there and send me some pictures. So thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. If you tried the Name Your Price tool yet, it works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Uh, right, everybody. It's a scooter here. It's time to do a board game unboxing. This will be the first. I don't know if this is the first time we've ever done a board game unboxing of games. I, a game I've already played. Uh, but this is like uh, this one will be. It might be even two games I've played. And uh, the reason is because this is like January 2021. I got this game as a holiday gift, and I, I, of course I wanted to play it on the holidays. Uh, so, but I said, well, this is still interesting. So, and uh, this one I haven't played very much yet. And so we'll go through just like an you know, unboxing of a regular board game. It'll just have a little bit less uh, wondering, wow, wow, wondering how do you play this game. But it starts off at the top. It says Hot Taco Presents. There's uh, It's kind of like one of those at the very top. Okay, so it's a bot. Oh, you're right. Slow it down, Scoots. So it comes in one of these uh, prototypical at this point uh, card smaller cardboard game boxes about the size of uh, uh, DVDs. I mean, thicker than that, but that type of uh, rectangle or a video game, you know, Xbox, PlayStation game, but probably like an inch and a half thick. And the box is uh, b- black, matte black, but it has, of course, stuff all over it. So it's not just a matte black box. In fact, as I was saying, at the top of the front of the box, there's one, two, three, four, five red stars at the very top, and then three vertical lines. And then it says Hot Taco Presents, then another vertical lines, and then five red stars. Kind of like you'd see at the, I don't know, like top, like at the set of Top Gun. And then it says taco versus burrito. And behind it is a black and gray, uh, uh, I don't know, like lines going towards the middle, kind of like you'd see an optical illusion or something. It's very subtle in the background. And then taco, it says taco versus burrito. But taco versus burrito is written in big font, like with a shadow font behind it. Kind of has some, it's white with uh, black borders and also some black, like, makes it look like it just came off a printer effect or a stamp. Uh, it, it then in between, with verses on the left and the right, on the left side is a taco and on the right side is a burrito. And this is not exactly like the, the pictures are not a West Coast taco or burrito. Not, this isn't a values judgment, but just in case anybody on the West Coast is looking at it, you might say, my goodness, I've never seen, like, a, a taco or burrito. But they're personalized. So the, the taco's on the left. The taco has eyes and a smile, closed mouth kind of smile, eyebrows. And inside the, the, the taco is a lettuce, tomato, Something else, cheese and lettuce again, maybe. And the taco has its hands up and it has arms and feet, arms and legs as well. And feet and hands and gloves. It's about to do a patty cake game. So it has winter mittens on to play patty cake with the burrito who's on the right side. Uh, Taco is horizontal where the burrito is vertical. 
which would make sense if the taco was vertical, everything would spill out. It's a hard taco, which already, because, I mean, there are, you can get hard tacos or crispy tacos on the West Coast. And, I mean, of course, you can at Taco Bell. And those are the tacos I ate as a youth, but they're just different than, but anyway, it's not important. But uh, so then on the right side is the burrito. The burrito uh, has eyes. Burrito's mouth is open. It's like moving its tongue as it's thinking and prepping for patty cake. So in some sense, just a quick thing, the burrito kind of looks more like a sporty and the taco looks more witty just by their mouth expex, uh what is that called? Expression. The burrito looks like it has like a green tomato in it and then maybe some cheese. We can't see any other ingredients. Then underneath that, it says the card game. That's also within the Top Gun style uh, decoration. So five stars and three lines. And then it says the battle to build the weirdest, wildest meal is on. Ages seven plus, two to four players. This is written in red. Approximately three minutes to learn, 15 minutes to play. Then on all four sides of the box, it says taco versus burrito with a star on either end. Red star, white print that looks like it was stamped. And then on the back side, it says taco versus burrito. The back of the box is a, like a red, but it says taco versus burrito. And then it has a, the ta- a taco with an exclamation point. This taco definitely has tomatoes, lettuce, and cheese. Oh, and either ground beef or refried beans. And then it has some cards poking out. And then quoting from the back, it says, In this surprisingly strategic game, players compete to build the weirdest, wildest uh, meal to win the game. Sounds simple, right? Uh, Not so fast. Give your opponent tummy aches uh, to reduce the value of the meal. Use Trash Panda, Crafty Crow, and Food Fight to gain the cards you need to win. Block opponents with no bueno. But beware of Health Inspector and Order Envy. They are real game changers. Once player one player is out of cards, the game is instantly over. And then it has more cards, and it says one game of five ways to play. It includes 24 food cards, 32 action cards, four quick start cards, four tacos and burritos, and one rule sheet. It says, for more details and gameplay videos, visit tacovburrito.com. Created by Alex Butler and Leslie Pearson, 2018 Hot Taco. So that's the box. Now, the first thing you notice when uh, you open the box are these envelopes, uh, which are made to hold your cards. It says taco on one side and burrito on the other side. And I think this is like they just hold the cards that you're making either you're deciding whether you're going to make a taco or burrito. And that's just for fun. Like, I don't think it's strategically uh, impact stuff. I definitely have it. I guess maybe you lie it down. We We were having trouble. But we were also playing on a couch, so... But it says taco versus burrito. Then there's the cards. Now... Let's read the rules after we do the cards. But the funny thing is I might not even remember how to play, even though I played this game about five days ago. So the backs of the cards say Taco vs. Taco vs. Burrito in the same uh, font as the cover of the box. And then it has the same black and gray uh, background with all the lines. Infinity lines? I don't know what you call it. Okay, so the first card is plus two. It's a food card. It's a bread with M O L D on there. And the bread, it's a there's a picture of bread and it's saying, Oh no. I mean it's not actually saying that, it just looks like it. And it's a food card placed in a burrito or taco to increase the value of the meal. So we can I guess assume that it adds two point plus two to your value. But I can't remember anything else. Oh, choco cake, uh, food card, place in a, but would you have this in a taco burrito? Place in a taco burrito. That's also a plus two. It looks a little bit like a, 
a, uh, is that a ding dong or a zig, n- ding dong? Um, it has, uh, it's chocolate shavings, chocolate syrup dripping off it, then two pieces of chocolate cake and then some marshmallow or cream in the center. Kind of has two eyes and a mouth too. Nothing made out of coal though. Um, uh, what is this? What were these? Uh, I forgot the name of this group. Uh, the Descendants? Is that who it was? Uh, that uh, one piece people dressed in an eyeball suit? Uh, so someone in an eyeball suit. They also have flippers on. That's plus three and food card. Uh, salsa with an extra ingredient, plus one. And uh, there's a bowl. It's like a wooden bowl of salsa and the bowl's waving. And yeah, the ball has two eyes, two legs, two feet, and two eyes and a mouth, uh, plus one. Uh, Super Fun Burger, plus one. Some of these, like, are meant to really make you laugh or say, what? And getting changed for the podcast. That's a food card, plus one. Uh, A thinker, that's plus three. Uh... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word in Spanish. Uh, not cabeza, but uh, anyway, uh, fresh fresh thinkers. Uh, that's plus three food cards. So that's a big point. So plus three, eh? Uh, gummy bears plus two. And uh, let's see how many gummy bears are on the card. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 gummy bears, it looks like. And there's red, which I'd assume is fruit punch. Then there's green, which is normally either green apple or lime. Pink, interestingly enough. I guess it would be pink lemonade or strawberry. Orange, which is usually orange. Then it kind of... uh, a turquoise, uh, which is always interesting when you have artificial flavors. You say turquoise. Usually turquoise they save for a pretty good flavor, like electric blue, you know, blue ice. Uh, it could be, it's usually not like something so simple as blue, like blue something. Then there's purple, which could be grape, or it could be some sort of purple punch. Oh, and then there's a light orange, like an amber which could be like a honey, or it could be a lemon. You know, it's a little bit, it's more of a sunset color than a yellow. So that's that one. Okay, next one is in our first uh, non-positive card. Negative three, tummy ache. Uh, place this card in a player's taco or burrito to decrease the value of their meal. And it's pink, and it shows a young child... Uh, this is, yeah, I don't feel so good. And they're holding their tummy and it has a pink background too. Uh, then there's another tummy ache right after that. that. This one's only negative one. So you can get tummy aches at different levels, clearly. Kind of remember that part. No bueno. So this must be an action card. It's a uh, turquoise to aquamarine it says no bueno and kind of like it has it in writing and then in like a comic book type uh a thing even with an electric uh explanation explanation point block any action from another player at any time during the game if played after another no no bueno it becomes a si bueno and blocks the block uh so we definitely had some no bueno showdowns Oh, another no bueno. So these must cards must not have been shuffled. There must have been a no bueno showdown when we played. Uh, Order Envy. This is green, and it shows kind of a person in a green uh, hat. And they kind of look like they're about to start frowning. And it says Order Envy. Green. I guess they're green with envy. Switch meals and hands with any player at the table by switching seats. The person to your left goes next. So this one, I do remember one time holding on to this one till the last, or the second to last move. Um, and I think making sure maybe I even had a no bueno, or maybe I knew all the no buenos were out. And I think that sealed a victory for me. I was able to change seats with the person who uh, 
really, you know, had the best hand. So there's that card. Uh, our old friend Broccoli. So this is like an older, p- p- smiling Broccoli, plus one. Fried Grasshopper, plus one. Uh, pretty. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Mustache, hair from a mustache or mustache, uh, and it has a monocle, plus three. That's worth a lot of money, though. I mean, a lot of points. Chocolate-covered shrimp, that's plus three as well. Looks more like a prawn to me, but uh, I guess it's a shrimp. Uh, I don't know. Is there any difference? A fish head. <laughs> the fish is saying, I need some body. Roly-poly fish heads. Uh, place in a uh, taco or burrito. Plus three. That's I mean, that's where you get the big money. Uh, lettuce uh, that's uh, seen better days. This shows the lettuce. Its eyes are closed. It's sleeping. It has its various shades of green, yellow, and brown. That's plus one. Slimy, l- slimy liver. I've been called a slimy liver before. Only plus one for that. Uh, trash panda. So this is a good card. It allows you to go through the trash pile or like the discard pile and place one card in your hand. Take one card, place it in your hand. And the panda's dancing. Looks very happy. Oh, another trash panda right after that. Uh, then a no bueno card. A negative two tummy ache. A uh, negative two tummy ache, a no bueno. So we could add it. We guess we had some tummy aches versus no buenos. Crafty crow. This one is a crow looking around. And it says, take one card from another player's taco burrito, put it in your taco burrito. So I guess you're going to go with a plus three, another trash panda. Uh, food fight. So this has a pair of French fries uh, with its mouth open and its eyes open wide. Orange background. Each player. Oh, this is fun. Each player flips one card from the draw pile. The player with the highest value food card wins and keeps any one card from the flipped cards. Tie. Repeat till there's a winner. Shuffle the other cards back in the draw pile. So it's kind of random, but then when you play that, at least you get a chance to win some cards. Trash, another trash panda. A negative three tummy ache, a food fight, a crafty crow. We may be at the end of the line. Oh, no, here's a new one. This one's, uh, this is, oh, this reminds me of the other game, uh, Mewing Kittens. Uh, health inspector, play immediately. Discard all the contents of your taco and burrito and end your turn. So that one stinks if you get it. At least it doesn't totally end the game. Uh, milk uh, after the uh, famous date on its label, plus one. Um, bowl of something that rhymes with rice, uh, that's plus three. Ice cream, plus two. Ice to meet you. Uh, so, and the ice cream's just sticking its tongue out. It's kind of a green, a winter green color. I don't know, blue green. Uh, watermelon plus two. The watermelon is kind of saying cheers because uh, its arms are above its head. It's a, a slice of watermelon smiling. Uh, then another health inspector. So that's not the card you want to get. Uh, food fights. Food fights, uh, crafty crow, no bueno, another no bueno, order envy. So it must have gone order envy, no bueno, no bueno. So that meant that the order envy went through. Crafty crow, negative three tummy ache. Uh, oh, hot yogurt. And the yogurt's saying it's getting hot in here. And that one's worth plus three. Salty lollipop. Uh, that might not be bad. Uh, plus two, a negative two tummy ache, a negative one tummy ache. Uh, plus one, uh, hot kombucha. That's plus one. Don't know. That would really soak a taco, though. 
cotton candy plus two. It's two cotton candies, a red and or a pink and a blue or turquoise. When they're side by side, they both have eyes. They look like they could be a team. Uh, sushi passed its prime, and it's a sushi waving hello. Uh, a cute little piece of sushi. Uh, hot sauce boss. This is X2. So this one, when played in your taco burrito, it doubles the value of your meal, the complete value. So that's powerful. Then another hot sauce boss, X2. So those are powerful if you have those. And then adorable marshmallows. It's good to be mellow. The marshmallows are pink. There's one on top of one another, like they're a family, and that's worth plus two. Okay, now let's read through the instructions. They have instructions on uh, in, uh, other languages other than English, which is nice. And that's all at Taco V Burrito slash rules. Uh, the goal to build the weirdest, wildest, most valuable meal. So you, when you play, and I'll try to paraphrase from this, you uh, choose your uh, choose taco or burrito, but it doesn't affect how the game is played. Shuffle the deck and deal each player five cards. Each player starts the game with five cards. There isn't a minimum or maximum number of cards you can have in your hand. Uh, then make a draw pile with the amazing rest of the cards face down. Neck, leave a space next to the draw pile for the trash pile. Uh, check for health inspectors. Everyone checks to make sure they don't have a health inspector. If you do, shuffle it back in the deck and take a new card. Uh, decides who goes first. Because the creator was seven when he created the game, we suggest the youngest player goes first and then move clockwise. Uh, how to play. On your turn, draw a card, play a card. So ingredients can be placed in any taco or burrito, any, so, you know, with a tummy ache, to increase the value of a meal. Tummy aches can be placed in any to reduce the value. Hot sauce boss can be placed in any to double the value of a meal. If you have two hot sauce bosses in your meal, your meal is multiplied by four, and action cards have a variety of effects. Hot tip, you can play ingredients, tummy aches, and hot sauce bosses in any meal, not just your own. Uh, can, uh, this continues till all the cards in the draw pile are gone. Uh, how to win. When all the cards in the draw pile are gone, continue playing, but skip the draw part of your turn. Don't reshuffle the trash pile. When one player is out of cards, the game is instantly over. Important, you cannot block the last card played. Okay, so that's how I won, was the last card played by me was uh, that, so, so no one can block that, whatever it's called, card. Player with the most valuable meal win at the end of the game wins. Uh, so you tally up your points, you know, and figure that out. Easy, not so fast, though, they say. Because you have the action part, you put cards, you know, the health inspector, no bueno. No bueno can be played at any time except if you get a health inspector. Can I no bueno the last card in the game? Nope. Uh, when you no bueno a card, what happens to the card? It goes in the trash pile. Crafty Crow, you get to take it. Trash Panda. Can I trash Panda a health inspector? Yes, uh, so if you had if you have a bunch of tummy aches, you could trash panda a health inspector and throw your meal in the trash. Can I trash panda a trash panda? You can, but only twice in a game. Can I discard a trash panda? Yes, you can discard any card, but that move counts as your turn. Food fight, we went over that, uh... Order Envy, you would swap things. What happens if the Order Envy play, player plays Order Envy as the last card? Play, they, I followed that tip right away. Can I discard it? Yes, you can. Oh, then there's more ways to play. And they're coming out with expansion. Oh, they had one expansion pack, and they're supposed to come out with another one. 
But then there's also on the back page is the legend of King Taco. When he was just seven, Alex, a.k.a. King Taco, announced he was going to create a game called Tacos vs. Burritos. After months of dreaming up weird foods and wild actions, his dream became a reality one magical Taco Tuesday. Even today, King Taco rules the Hot Taco Empire, cooking up new game ideas and expansion packs. Unless he has to go to school that day. Uh, thanks for uh, purchasing Taco vs. Burrito and supporting this young entrepreneur. Team Taco and Team Burrito. So that's that game. It was a fun. That was a. We had fun playing it. It's a fast game, which is nice. Um, maybe I'll have more to report on it, but I have another game here, so we might as well keep it going. This is another game I've played a few more times, but it's a pretty. Uh, it's a game I'm not always in a hurry to play because it's very involved. But I think this game is actually really fun. I, I think it's just like, and, and now I'm thinking about it, I did have a lot of fun playing it. It's called Beat That! Exclamation Point. It's a bonkers battle of wacky challenges. And I can imagine for like when people start getting together in bigger groups, this would be a really fun game with kids and adults. Kids might just get a little too excited. And it has a pop in box. It's in a bigger box. It's not a traditional. It's a rectangular cube. I don't even know what you call that, but uh, it's a it's a bigger box because it had this game has a lot more stuff in it. It's less. It's a uh, it's a card game, activity based card game. And it's wacky. The cover is wild, uh, in a good way. So on the front cover it says it is very surreal, uh, and it has, like I said, pop in colors. Uh, so it says beat that the bonkers game of wacky challenges, and there's a lot of predominant colors on the cover. There's orange, there's a cayenne or blue or cyan. There's a lighter uh, yellowish orange, a yellow, uh, white, uh, pink, red and green and like this so there's like this weird sky that's like a orangish yellow sky with cool clouds there's a whale in the sky flying i think it's a i don't know what type of whale it is but uh it uh the whale's like has a spout going that's orange then there's like an orangish sea with uh what are those called in them? The things with hourglasses, blue and green hourglass, like blue hourglasses with green sand or white sand that's tinged to green because of the color. And they're up in the sea. Then we have land, like rolling hills, which are blue, covered in blue grass. And then we have competitors, like stretching or getting ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven on the front of the box. Uh, three have already won. But in the background above Beat That, there's like a, a person doing two competitions. There's also daisies popping up. Uh, there's a woman stretching. There's another character singing and holding a cup. Uh, and then there's another character kind of running and, and doing something. And then we have first, second, and third place. Uh, first place... Uh, uh, is uh, someone with a uh, metal, uh, second and blue hair. Then second place has purple hair and is giving a th- maybe it's a thumbs up or a hang ten side. Both these characters have blue fingernails, blue shorts, pink shoes. I guess all the characters are have like uh, pink and white wristbands, uh, blue tube socks, or white tube socks with blue stripes, pink shoes, blue shorts, and then white white uh, competition shirts. There's even a, a, a lake, an orange lake. There's a cactus. And then on the sides of the boxes are more characters doing more competitions. Uh, and then the back it says, beat that, uh, Bonkers game of wacky challenges. It shows four cards, 160 challenges, four categories, but we'll get to that. Uh, limber up and prepare to bounce, flip, stack, hop, roll, blow, balance, and catapult your way to victory in this wacky party game. 
Collect as many points as possible by betting on your ability to complete challenges. All players attempt to, to the exact same challenges, so get ready for the ultimate abilities. Uh, great for adults and kids alike. A funny party game, belly busting laughter. And this is how to play. Pick a challenge, read it. Players place their bets. Don't worry, it's not real gambling. It's just like points gambling. For all players, attempt the challenge. Players bank their points. And you're also not betting against. You're betting on yourself, not against other players. Uh, find out who's earned bragging rights after ten rounds. And so it comes with 160 challenge cards, 80 betting tokens, 10 cups, 5 balls, 4 dice, chopsticks, memo pad, tape measure, timer, uh, hourglass timer, and game rules. All right, so when you open it up, uh, the first thing you notice is this, wow, this comes with a lot of stuff. And it has like a foam insert uh, to hold everything. And one foam insert are solo-style cups. Uh, that are orange that say beat that on there. They're a little bit different than a, I, I don't know, I don't have a solo cup, but uh, they, they, they may, they're, I don't think they're like 16 ounce solo cups. Uh, so they may be, you know, made for the game. Inside the cup uh, is a four light blue ping pong balls. Oh, no, scratch that five. There may even be six, and we may be missing one. But uh, And those are light blue, and they've held up pretty well. Like, I'm surprised. I was expecting them to be already dented, but uh, they're not. Okay, and then it comes with the instructions. It has, uh, like, a little slot for the chopsticks, which are green plastic chopsticks. It has, uh, what is oh, like an insert for the timer, for the tape measure, for a pad, like a, what do you call that pad? Stick and pad? What do you call those things? Post-it pad, uh, the cards, and then the dice and the coins. Comes with five orange dice. And then in the coins, it comes with one coin, like a dollar coin, five dollar and three dollar. Or three point coins, um, one point coins and five point coins. So we'll run through the rules first on this one because it'd be it'd be fun. There's a lot we won't be able to get through all the competition cards anyway, but it'd be fun to ponder uh, this one in the like instead of guessing since I played it before. Okay, so it's a really simple instructions. There's only three pages, and it definitely was like oh, okay. At first, I didn't understand the uh, betting stuff. Uh, and after playing it, for, I, I probably played it five or six times. I said, oh, okay, the betting system is pretty good. And it doesn't introduce this idea of, like, guess to, like guessing your abilities and being wrong or right. But you're also trying to see, like, what other coins that other people have left. Uh, so getting started, beat it. It's a wacky challenge game. Ten rounds. Before attempting each challenge, players place a bet on how likely they are to complete the challenge by selecting a token which reflects their confidence. All players then attempt the same challenge. The players with the most points uh, wins. There's four kinds of categories. Solo, where you attempt it on your own. Battle Royale, where everybody competes against each other. Buddy Up, where you work co cooperatively with a partner. Or duel where you go head to head. And you can deal out more tokens if you want a longer game, but the betting tokens, you start with 10 tokens. Uh, one token can be bet by each player per challenge. Once a token is bet, it can't be used again. Blue is one point, orange is three points, yellow is five. So, how to play? Clear the table of clutter. You're going to need space. Yeah, because you need a lot of space for this game. Place the challenge cards in the center. Give each player five blue, three orange, and two yellow. Then roll the dice to see who goes first. The person with the highest number picks a challenge from the pile, reads it aloud to the rest of the players. And then four, each player must bet one of their tokens on how confident they are in their own ability to complete the challenge or their team's ability for buddy up. 
So if you think you got it, you know, bet five. Uh, if it's a long shot, bet one. Once all the bets are placed, you go clockwise in turns to attempt the challenge, starting with the player who picked the card. Players who complete the challenge move their token to a safe bank, uh, quote-unquote, for the, for the points they've won. Players who don't put their token in the box. Uh, the next player then picks a new challenge card, repeat into, above until 10 challenges have been completed. Player who banks the most points wins in the event of a draw. Play on using solo challenges until there's a winner. Uh, rules. All players must place their bets at the same time. Uh, tokens which have been banked or discarded can't be used. For buddy up and dual challenges, go around clockwise, picking partners until all players have been selected once. Place bets once all partners have been chosen. For buddy up and dual challenges, if there's an odd number of players, then the player without a partner or an opponent must still place their bet, but they get to watch and then pick who they want to go against or work with. The player repeating the challenge wins or loses their token based on the outcome of the second go. So you can definitely use that strategically too. Uh, just I noticed, uh, so someone bet five and someone bets one, and the person with the five didn't complete it on the first go, you definitely don't want to give them a second chance to win five, obviously, in my opinion. So a lot of times I would just pick the person, if it's a duel, I will pick the person that had bet one. You, even if I think I can beat them, because, I mean, sometimes I guess I'd say, well, it's a lock. Well, because it doesn't matter. what you You don't win their five anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's just one strategic thing I noticed. Uh, uh, for buddy up challenges, players do not have to bet the same value as their partner. There's always a nitpicker who will try to tr reinterpret a challenge to their advantage. Play fair. Uh, people's abilities greatly vary, so free, feel free to adapt the challenges to suit the skill level of your group. And show us your skills. We'd love to see you playing. Uh, so tag them, you can win a free print-and-play expansion pack. This is by Gutter Games Limited. Okay, so now I have the challenge cards. And there's a big stack of them, but we'll just go through them. On the back of the card, it says, Beat That! Exclamation point, Bakker's Game of Wacky Challenges. And then it has different of the cartoony characters from the box doing doing competitions. And the first one is solo. The first one I said, this is actually, they each of the cards have a number. This is a number 59. High dive. Uh, place a cup on the floor. Grab another three cups. You have 30 seconds to drop the cups one at a time from waist height so that they land in a stack on the floor. So you hold the cup at your waist and you just got to drop it from your waist to a cup on the floor so it lands on there. So from your waist, I don't know, like if, if I, since not seeing it, I definitely wouldn't bet five. I would either bet three or one, depending on where we were at, at the game. Because I don't know, I haven't seen a solo cup drop. If it drops uh, rim first, then you're going to be fine. It'll be easy. But I got a feeling it's not going to be easy. Okay, the next one is a solo, number 23, Tender Touch. Close your eyes and get another player to pass you two dice. You have 30 seconds to feel for the dot and place both dice, both dice on the table with the sixes facing up. Uh, I would definitely bet six for the, or five for this. Uh, it seems pretty easy. It doesn't mean it is easy. But, like, you get definitely what you're betting with five, uh, you got to guess at what you think. Like, you got to trust your gut and say, okay, I'm going to go for it because some of them are really not easy. So, I would say already. So, we're two challenges in. Let's say the first one, we'd be in pretty good shape for this one. Let's just say we completed both. So, we have six now. We're doing great. Uh, so this is the next one, Battle Royale. Roll a dice and pass it to the next player. Then they roll. 
and if they roll the same number as the previous player, they're out. Continue clockwise till there's only one winner. So I just bet one for this because it's like uh, not under your control. And let's say we lose. So we still have six, but we didn't win that one. Well, that's too bad. This one has two people throwing paper airplanes on the back of it. Yankee Doodle. Okay, using three cups and two challenge cards, create a tower as shown, which I'll explain to you. This is solo. You have three attempts to yank the cards out of the tower at the same time so that the cups stack neatly. I definitely bet this one won. So it's a solo cup with the, the open end down. Then a car, then a playing card, then a solo cup on top of the playing card, which is open end down. Then a playing card, then another solo cup with the open end down. So you've got to pull out the two solo cups, uh, I mean the two cards at the same time, so all three cups drop into that they're nesting in one another. And I would say we didn't get that. So we still have six, uh, which is pretty good. Six is pretty good out of four and we bet three of our ones right i don't know how many ones we had we have 10 total oh we have five ones so we have two ones left uh one five so we're in good shape okay this one's called slappy bounce you have three attempts to bounce an air bounce a ball in the air 10 consecutive times using a challenge card uh, I'll bet three for this one. So you got to take a, a ten, a, 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 what do you call that thing? A ping pong ball and bounce it 10 times in a row on the card. But you have three chances. And I, I think I did this one and it's not easy, but it's possible. So I bet three. Part of me wishes we bet five, but we already bet three and we completed it. So now what do we have? Nine. So we're pretty close to, I'm not trying to brag, but we could see, like, uh, from my experience, if you break 10, you're you're going to win. And that was five, right? Okay, Spinny Ninny. This is solo. Using one hand to spin a cup on a chopstick. With the other hand, throw a ball in the air and catch it three times while the cup remains spinning. You have one attempt. I'm betting one. This is really hard. So you have to spin a cup on a on a chopstick in one hand and then throw a ball and catch it three times with your other hand. I, I mean, I, some people may be able to do that easy. I don't think I can. Also, I forgot what I was going to, what we were going to score. I forgot my score, but that's fine. Okay, this one's called Sports Star. So sometimes there's word games. So this one says, going clockwise, take it in turns to name types of sports. Uh, players who duplicate or hesitate for more than three seconds are out. Play until there's only one winner. So I'd bet three on this just because there's a chance. Uh, this could be tough, but it could also, it's really, uh, at least it's not based on coordination, which is not my strong suit. So you're just basically going, at first it would go fast, like tennis, soccer, football, badminton, racquetball, shove, then I would have got out right there because I, I was trying to think of that ice game, ice hockey, you could say, running, dancing, uh, long jump. So you just got to keep going. So I don't know if we, I think we lost that one because I messed it up. Sorry. Shaky stacker. Stand, this is a buddy up. So stand six feet apart. So you're working as a team. One player holds five balls. Their whole, their other player, their partner holds five cups in one hand. Throw balls into the stack. Once a ball goes in, stack the cup with the ball below it in the bottom cup. Uh, continue throwing and stacking until the balls go in. You have 30 seconds to get all five balls in. So you basically get a ball in, then you put a cup on top of the ball. It's not that shaky, I don't think. So I, I, I don't know if I had a five left, I would bet it. Otherwise, I'd bet a three. Because uh, 30 seconds, this isn't easy, but it's doable. And you could see how it could be fun. Whippersnapper. 
Place three cups in a triangle on the table with a dice in each. Stand two feet away. Cradle ball in your top. Uh, so cradle ball in your sh- the, the end of your skirt is, or shirt is what they mean. You have 30 seconds uh, to whip your shirt. Uh, they say top. So I don't know if this is a UK game. So your ball fires out and lands in a cup. It can bounce in. That one, I would, this is a doable one too. Two feet away, you should be able to get a ball from your shirt into the from your shirt the front of your shirt into a cup. I uh, wouldn't bet five though. I think I'm out of fives anyway. Okay, next one. Logger's leap. Uh, place two cups with a gap between them. Bounce a ball over the first cup, so it bounces between both cups before landing in the second cup. You have 30 seconds. These ones are either impossible or super easy, so I bet one because it's like uh, you never know how the ball is going to bounce. And then if you're going to get like uh, I've seen it play both ways when we've had ones like this where everybody gets it in one or two turns and then other ones where it's impossible. Top hat. So these are. This is a good one. This is the laughing one. I mean, I haven't done this one, but it's a battle royale. All players stand and balance a cup upside down on their head. Players must try and blow their opponent's cup off while trying to protect their own cup. Uh, the last player with a cup on their head wins. No hands allowed. So this could be fun. It could probably, you know, some people might end up unhappy about it. I would still bet one, though. Unless you're like seven feet tall, then I would bet five. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Place a cup face down on a table. Place Balance a chopstick on the top. Spin the chopstick 365, 360 degrees without it falling off. You have five attempts. No, I bet one. That that sounds really hard. So you have an upside-down solo cup, and you have to spin the chopstick without it falling off. At least for me, that seems not possible. On the noggin solo, stand with your feet firmly on the floor. Throw a ball high up in the air, bounce it off your hair, and then catch it without moving your feet. You only get one attempt, though. I'd bet three. Because it's not that hard, but it could be, it's not easy either. So you can see this being fun. Uh, Ultimate Ninja. Oh, this is like the Ricky J. So place a cup on the edge of the table. I did this one, I could not complete it. Place a cup on the edge of the table, at least three feet away. Hold five cards. Throw the cards at the cup one at a time and knock the cup off the table. I don't think I could throw very many cards flat and then. The ones that I did didn't hit the cup. Rapid bounce. Uh, Line three cups uh, up and grab three balls. You have 30 seconds to bounce one ball into each cup consecutively. If you miss, you must start again at the beginning. I think I did this one, but this one isn't easy either. Uh, 30 seconds can either be long or short. Uh, And that also depends on if there's something behind the balls. That's another thing. Like... uh, if you're playing with a wall behind you or you take turns kind of being the uh, ball person, it's different than if you could lose it in a room and it could go under the couch. And those are kind of rules to discuss and build consensus with before, you know, you start playing. Oh, this is named after Edward Scissorhands. I did complete this one, but I think it only about one. Edward Cup Hands. Place a cup over each hand. You have 30 seconds to stack four dice on top of each other using only your cup hands. Here's a free advice. Use the very edges of the cup. And don't do it like in a picture. Like, uh, do it your own way and you'll figure it out. Uh, prepare for landing. Uh, create a circle on the floor using a tape measure. You have 30 seconds to create a paper plane. These are fun. So you have 30 seconds to make a paper plane, an airplane. Then you have three attempts to throw the plane into the circle from six feet away. I couldn't do that. I I thought I did a pretty good plane, but I couldn't get in the circle. Okay, a couple more. 
staggeringly hard. This is so low. Place three cups facing up on the table. Uh, you have 30 seconds to stack the three cups on top of each other using only your elbows. So you have to have one card. F w the first cup has to be face down. So it starts face up. You already have to do that face down. Then you have to place another cup butt to butt or bottom to bottom and then face to face. So this one is really hard. So it looks like a lava lamp in the end. That's, uh, and plus it's going to end up with, I wouldn't even, I would skip that card because I don't want the cups getting ruined. Foodie. So this one's a word game. Uh, choose a letter below. Going clockwise, taking turns to name foods beginning with the letter. Players who duplicate or hesitate for more than three seconds are out. Restart with a new letter and play until there is one winner. So there's a bunch of letters listed. So it says T, taco. And then I already paused, so. Or you could say tuna. Uh, ta oh, and then they said taco again. Oh, sorry, you're out. Okay. I'm playing by myself, though. Okay, it's just maths, bro. So then you see it is a UK game because they're calling it maths. So scatter four dice on the table. Using multiplication, calculate the highest number. This is a duel using each number once. Uh, that one first to shout out the correct number wins. That would not be my game. I would lose for sure. Okay, here's another word game. Uh, very similar. Take the first letter. Uh, but it's celebrities, uh, so it's a list of letters. Uh, so you'd say M, Marilyn Monroe, M, Mac, Bernie Mac, who, who's that count, then you'd probably argue, and you say Matthew McConaughey. You don't have to use the, you could just have to use the M. You don't have to start with another letter, I don't think. Okay, balls to telepathy, buddy up, uh, Place a ball, on, a cup and a ball on a table. Using one chopstick per player, you have 30 seconds to transfer the ball into the cup uh, without the ball touching your hands. So that could be fun. It could, you know, with your buddy. You're both trying to get the ball between your chopsticks and get it in the cup. Okay, two more. So all bounce, no blink. Uh, line up the three cups and the three balls. Uh, you have 30 seconds to bounce all three balls into the cups without blinking using your non-dominant hand. Oh, boy. That could be, for me, it's easier because of my right hand, but not blinking. That's going to be tough. So, uh, yeah. Okay, last one. Leapfrog. Line four cups up. You have 30 seconds to bounce the ball over the first three cups so it lands in the last cup. So at this point, you'll know... Like, see, the bouncing games, at least after you play it for a little while, you get an idea for a feel of the table or the floor or something. But basically, before we go, so you say, Scoots, I got to have the details of how we play this to win. I say, okay, for the taco burrito one, I don't know. Uh, unless you get that one card, then try to hold it to the end of the game. Otherwise, just do your best and have fun. And for this game, too, just try to have fun. Uh, but I will say uh, betting is like a big part of it because uh, and keeping an eye, eye, eye on other people's score. Uh, and it really comes down to kind of your gut of like those three and fives. Uh, like don't use up all your ones at the beginning of the game. Like you're going to have to at some point in the first three or four cards risk a three or five. It just so you have a couple ones left when it's something you know you're not going to be able to complete. Because there's ones that are like balance ones, like uh, we're having to like throw a ball and balance on one foot. And it's like, okay, there's no chance of me getting that done, like the spinning of the chopstick. So definitely like think about it might take one or two games to kind of get your betting strategy down and get an idea of the other players. uh because then also seeing what the other players like that are close to you, like sometimes there'll be games where you're in close com you're in close competition with one person and one or two people are out of the game. So then you just got to kind of pay attention to like what, what coins does the other person you're competing with have left 
Like, do they have a lot of ones? Then you're, you like, or are they making up ground? Like, you went through your fives and your threes already. And you're going to even want to add up, like, okay, they have 10 possible points left. I only have six possible points left. So, I'm really going to have to, like, like, uh, you know, like, I don't know. The, 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 again, it's hard to tell, but mostly it's supposed to be fun. I mean, or, and to play to win, of course. Or to try to win. So, I don't know. So, those are two games I got for the holidays uh, that are unboxed. Uh, and I uh, hope you enjoy them. Good night. All right. I want to thank uh, the people who uh, um, <laughs> reviewed the podcast recently on Apple Podcasts. Uh, first one's a, a joke, though. They, they say, hey, you did really dislike it. Just kidding. The five stars love the podcast. They fall asleep in 10 minutes. Melanin. Uh, then someone else is uh, said, uh, is this a joke? Uh, like, uh, they don't get it at all. So I guess uh, uh, there's that. Uh, from Canada, AJ says, great, listen, always helps me fall asleep. Been listening for months. Can't remember one night I didn't fall asleep. Uh, what I love is how I don't need to pay much attention to Scooter's voice and I can fall asleep without worrying about it. Thank you. Uh, then someone says, uh, terrible, don't care about your beliefs uh, and you're not relaxing. Thank you. I mean, uh, then Ja says, uh, I can't sleep without him. Ever since I discovered the podcast six months ago, there's literally been a handful of nights when I can't, uh, I haven't fallen asleep. Mindless meanders allow my mind to slow down and be able to get a good night's sleep. I often drift, drift off into sleep long before a story started to look forward to mindless meandering. Every night, uh, I can't imagine falling asleep without it. Uh, I listen every night, says, uh, it helps me fall asleep every night. If you're new, stick by it. Uh, one day it clicks, that makes all the difference. Uh, then uh, somebody brains, it says, uh, maybe I already read this one, though. They said they say the podcast is 15 minutes of ads. Uh, that's just I mean, not, not accurate, but... Uh, and they don't agree with uh, my viewpoints and stuff. So that's, uh, okay. then Och, uh, Och Reek Wills, uh, I don't remember that one, so maybe I haven't read these. Uh, good at what he does, uh, it helps, uh, the mind can, if your mind continues to war after the lights go out, this, uh, simulates those moments just as you're falling asleep when things get garbled and snagged, uh. Strings the ideas to get de- together. If you're a Who fan, this is a podcast for you. And yeah, the podcast has ads and uh, acknowledges uh, causes. That's not politics, just reality. If you're not in the mood, fast forward. Uh, this guy's talented. Thank you. Megacy22 says, Cozy and Sleepy uh, came to the spot in mid-2020. Took a couple tries. Once I got used to the format, I got sleepy. I love the pointless stories. Uh, and I'm off to dreamland overall. A great podcast. And Jeffrey Boy says, uh, I have insomnia. I can't sleep without medicine, but this helps so much. Uh, thank you. So thanks, everybody, for reviewing the show on Apple Podcasts. Sleep With Me exists a free show because if you let re- review the show over on Apple Podcasts, uh, Support our sponsors to support our uh, show directly. Spread the word. Use our referral program at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. But you, or just share about podcasts in general. You don't even have to talk about sleep with me. Believe it or not, if you help someone discover a love of podcasts or share your love of podcasts with somebody, get them started. Show them how to use their podcast app. Show them some things they might be interested in. Down the road, they'll either introduce somebody, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be great for everybody. In that case, everybody wins. You don't even have to talk about sleep with me unless it comes up. Uh, thanks, and, thanks, and good night, everybody. All right, everybody. Sleep With Me is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And, you know, throughout May and June and all summer long, Sleep With Me is proud to join the cause of destigmatizing therapy. So if you're having a tough time with relationships, you're having difficulty sleeping, difficulty meeting your goals, if you're feeling anxious or stressed, BetterHelp counselors can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own 
trained, licensed professional therapists. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And BetterHelp's therapists have a broad range of expertise that might not be locally available in your area. It's available for clients worldwide. And it's so easy. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. You can schedule weekly video, phone, or even live chat sessions. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. I've heard from listeners that have utilized it. I know people in my personal life that have utilized BetterHelp. And it's just taking that step. And I know the flexibility and the ease of use with BetterHelp has started to expose more and more people that I have regular contact with uh, to online therapy. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. You have to use our link to get that discount. That's betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. BetterHelp. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash sleep with me. That's right, everybody. Better help. Thanks, everybody.